Welcome into Mining Stock Daily, everybody. We have a corporate update and a very important corporate update at that to share with the listeners here of the podcast. Happy to be welcomed in by the CEO of, well, formerly known as Midas Gold, now known as Perpetua Resources, and that's Mrs. Laurel Sayer. Uh, Laurel, there was a big announcement yesterday that hit the tape. Uh, not only is the company ready to be listed on the NASDAQ, I believe that begins as soon as tomorrow, uh, but Midas went ahead and renamed the company to Perpetua Resources. So this is a just another part of this big transition that's taken place with the company uh, over the last couple months. Uh, but welcome into the podcast, and really, if you can start out by giving us a rundown of these sure. consistent changes to the company. Sure. Um, we are very excited. Um, yesterday was kind of like Christmas morning for all of us as we had prepped <laughs> so hard for this new announcement that we have. And Midas Gold has always been more than a mining company. And so we decided our name really didn't say what we were. So we changed it to Perpetua Resources. And Perpetua, in for Idahoans, is a very dear, it means Latin, it means uh, to be perpetual, to go forever, so it's on our state motto, Esto Perpetua, Perpetua, and it's, um, we had the idea as we came together to name it Perpetua Resources because we're more than a mining company. We have a strong restoration component of our project that is because we're mining in a brownfield we are producing a critical mineral antimony that is uh, domestic for domestic will put it will be we will be the only source of domestic mining of antimony in the US um, we have really played and worked hard to demonstrate that we're responsible mining having a strong ESG component to our our project um, and we're a different kind of mining company Right now, 50% of our company are women, are female. Of course, we're just not operating yet, but we think that that brings a different perspective as well as we move forward and look at things differently. So we've been really excited. It's a great opportunity for us to launch because we have just had some great accomplishments the last year and into the first part of this year with our draft EIS out on the street, um, with over 80% of the comments were positive for the project. We had our released our feasibility study the first part of this year. We had also an agreement with the EPA and the Forest Service on an administrative order on consent that has us up cleaning up this area, allows us to begin doing that before we mine. So really, puts forward the fact that we are serious about restoration and the opportunity to make the area better. And then the NASDAQ listing, moving the company to Idaho. Uh, it's been a big year for us. And we thought we needed to change the name because we're a different kind of mining company. That is a very um, thorough and welcomed explanation of this move. I think the uh, yesterday when the news hit, the market was a little maybe taken back a little bit because it's always been Midas, mm -hmm. right? Then uh, despite the company change, the Stibnite project remains the same. And uh, the purpose behind Stibnite uh, remains the same. Um, you know, can you talk to me about this NASDAQ listing and just kind of the challenges? Were there much many challenges getting this going again? It begins trading tomorrow, Perpetua Resources with the symbol PPTA, and also the same on the Toronto Stock Exchange up, uh, up north. Uh, can you walk us through kind of that process and any sort of challenges that came down during uh, during the whole process? Well, it's something that we wanted to do. So, um, and we knew we needed to do it because we wanted to have we're a U.S. company. We want to be, we want to work and cater to U, the U.S. markets. And so we went through the process and challenging it. There, it is challenging when you are. You have to adapt to Canadian as well as U.S. policies, and we had attorneys involved. We had uh, all kinds of documents going back and forth. Um, it is challenging to do that, but it's something that needed to be done, and 
and we were uh, we were committed to doing it. Talk about uh, the makeup of this company. Is, is the transition from Vancouver fully into Boise? Is that uh, practically finalized already? Yes, it is. Um, we were closing the Vancouver office, and as of the end of January, it was closed, and we all of everything is now moved to Boise, Idaho. Okay. And it, it's really remarkable. 58% of the company are women. 50, 50%. 50. Mm-hmm. Oh, 50. Mm-hmm. Well, still, still a remarkable number. Um, you know, is, is, is that kind of the, 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 this inclusiveness? Is that, can, will we be seeing more of this as the project continues to advance forward? I think so. I, um, and, and I'm very careful how I speak to this because I don't, I don't, I don't have, we have some really strong men on our project. You know, you have to be very careful how you talk about this, but the reality is, is in mining, it is not necessarily attracted women, right? So we have, we have women in that analyze data. We have women in our public relations. We have women in our leadership. We have women in our accounting. We have a really strong social license. Uh, and so our folks that are out on the ground working with the local communities, most of them are women. Um, in our permitting area, we have, uh, we ha- it is, is led by some men, but if you reach out into some of the contractors that we work with. There's a lot of women that work in mining and I am, I'm just really pleased that we, we can have that image changed, that we can be sort of a change to that in that image. Um, We want to attract women when we begin in operations to this project. And it's very interesting in the surveys and the work that we've done that it's attractive to women to work for a mining company that have women in leadership. I mean, we could do a whole dial research project on socio- how the social sociology of all of that works and everything, and I'm not an expert, but what I can tell you is that they're attracted to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, a recent hire that you were able to bring on is a new vice president mm-hmm. of investor relations and finance. Uh, Miss Jessica Large, and she uh, will be relocating uh, to Boise. It sounds like I'll, because she actually comes from Newmont, so she has some uh, major uh, major mining background. Mm-hmm. Also comes with Rio Tinto as well. Uh, so very fascinating. And you kind of talk about I'm maybe not just specifically this hire with Jessica, but uh, bringing on more people that have background with major mining companies and how that kind of fits the mold to continuing development of Stibnite through this permitting process. Mm-hmm. Yes. And I, I, it's interesting attracting people from other major mining companies and other major mining projects that work on our project. They were, they basically came to us. They had, they knew we had openings or you get a, you hire someone because there's a personal connection with someone else that they've worked with in the industry. But um, they, every person that has come to us have said, I have been following your project. I like your project. You have a strong restoration, economic industry combination. We know. So you already have these people that are coming from the industry, industry that recognize the fact that, we can make the economy and the environment work together and they can be profitable. They both help each other. And they understand that because they are scientists and geologists and they work in that area. They understand how you can make the environment work with industry. And this project has attracted those people. And I think that's one of our biggest strengths. Yeah. All right. So, uh, Laura, this is Mining Stock Daily. So we got to kind of talk about the economics and the finance behind all this thing. Um, you know, I know this has kind of been a period of transition over the last couple months for the entire company. Uh, but really, if we kind of look into this later part of the winter, maybe into spring, uh, outside of maybe a movement in the gold price, what is something, a catalyst 
uh, that the company may be looking forward to to really help get this uh, share price back into more upward momentum? Well, we're, we're really looking at um, working, working with folks that can hear the story of our critical mineral. I think being able to launch this as and, and sh- uh, make antimony the star somewhat of the project, um, we will be the only domestic source of antimony in the U.S., uh, being able to, as the, as the dialogue changes into the green environment, what do you need to be a sustainable green environment? Well, you need to be mining at home those minerals that you use in solar, in wind, in electric batteries. You need to be mining those things at home. And we're going to have the opportunities to sell that, to tell that. And the fact that we're advancing in our schedule. Um, we've, we've gone through, we've had delays, but we have now are in the last part of the schedule to get this permit across the line and hoping that we can keep working with that and working with, um, the regulatory agencies to help get this project to the, to the finish line. Very, it's going to be a really fascinating uh, next couple of months to see this really come through into fruition. You talked about localization. Obviously, there's a almost like a you know localizing within Idaho, moving everything to Boise, having the Stibnite project in Idaho, uh, expanding the regionalization and sourcing some of those critical materials in a time where a lot of those uh, metals are hitting the attention right. of the re, of the investment community here. Um, do you feel like the timing of Stib Night really could, could, could it be any more better? Any better, excuse me. There's no more before better. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's, I, I, I agree. Um, we really need these, these critical minerals in the U S we need to get this permitted. Um, that's one of the main reasons why we cha- moved the company to Idaho. We changed the name. Um, you can't be talking about a U.S. critical mineral unless you're a company in the U.S. and you're, you're working with the markets in the U.S. and you're working with the regulatory agencies in the U.S. Um, you have to be able to say, say you're a U.S. company you, ha- you need to be listed on NASDAQ. You need to have a name that reflects your image and what you do, and Perpetua Resources does that. Um, so all of those launching at the first part of this year, I think we have got a momentum that's going to push us all the way to the end. Uh, any concerns working with a federal government that leans Democratic? No, um, because our story is one of restoration, of producing a critical mineral of responsible mining. Um, this administration has said that they, they want to be, have a sustainable uh, critical mineral market. They want to be able to have green energy. If you want to do that, you've got to be mining in the U S and you've got to be mining critical minerals in the U S and using those sources. So we're, we, and we are far enough along on the permitting process that I think we can just keep, keep moving along. And we try very hard, and I think we're very transparent in this, to follow the regulations. We are not cutting corners. We're not asking for favors. We're following the process, and we have been committed to that. We have been transparent about it in every way. And I think that that has been helped to keep us elevated with the regulatory agencies that we are someone they can trust. Uh, last question, and somewhat off topic, but uh, hits close to home. I got to ask you about this bill from the uh, Idaho State Legislature uh, regarding the ability for the state treasury to buy and uh, store gold. Uh, any chat with Midas about perhaps down the road uh, sourcing some of that gold from the Stibnet project? They have not come to me. 
so I have not <laughs> chatted with them, so I have not had a conversation regarding that. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, maybe we'll just plant that seed in their ear. Okay. It, so, <laughs> all right, Laurel. Uh, you know, I know it's been a long transition last couple of months for you. Uh, it's just a next step. I look forward to having our next conversation and see how uh, things are progressing. Until then, best of luck to you and the team, and thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Trevor. Appreciate it. And that's Laurel Sayer. She is CEO of Perpetua Resources, formerly known as Midas Gold. Uh, Perpetua will begin trading on the NASDAQ and the TSX tomorrow, February 18th, with the symbol PPTA. The information presented should not be considered investment advice. Mining Stock Daily and its affiliates are not responsible for any loss arising from any investment decision in connection with the material presented herein. Please do your own research or speak with a licensed financial representative before making any investment decision.